A week ago now, a wild story hit the nationwide news. In fact, some of these news agencies are still here right this second. I mean, it's still an ongoing thing, but the assistant director of corrections here at the Lauderdale County Correction Center, her name was Vicki White. She left this building right here behind me with a prisoner who was very dangerous and he was in here he was going to trial for capital murder they left this building just over a week ago now on friday april the 29th and they haven't been seen since there's twists and there's turns and a ton of new evidence that comes out every day so today i've driven all the way up here to florence alabama i have all of the footage and i'm going to show you the timeline as it happened of this daring escape from this prison and then also we'll talk about why Casey White was in prison in the first place. So this is going to be a very interesting video. It's still going on as we speak. Like I said in the intro, I don't know how far across the nation this story has gotten. I know that it's been on Fox and CNN and MSNBC and all of those mainstream media channels, but for the most part, the story has been reported in bits and pieces here and there. So you're only getting little nuggets of it at a time. Well, today I'm gonna put all of those nuggets into one full timeline and I'm gonna show you the locations and the spots where it happened at. Because this is an ongoing thing, the reporters are still out here with their cameras and stuff right now. Right across the street is the uh, Florence police like car lot where all their police cars are. Look at the fourth one down that, that Mustang GT right there that's black and white. That's kind of wild. Now, even though the escape took place on April the 29th, this story really starts back in 2015 when Casey White went on a multi-day crime spree. Casey, he had just broken up with his then girlfriend and they were fighting. So out of anger and jealousy, Casey kicks in the door of his ex-girlfriend's apartment and he opens fire, attempting to shoot her and two of her male friends who were visiting at the time. All three people survived the attack, but his ex-girlfriend's beloved pet was shot and killed during that attack. And uh, now Casey, knowing that the police were gonna be after him, he flees on foot to get away. He knew he wouldn't be able to get too far on foot. So he decides to steal a vehicle to leave the area. And on his third attempt at a gas station, he was successful and he hit the road. Once Casey reached Limestone County in about the Athens, Alabama area, law enforcement called up to him. Casey led police on a high-speed chase down the interstate here before Casey lost control of the vehicle, driving into the median over here on the left, going airborne as he came back on to the interstate, and then he goes off the road over to this field on the right and crashes into this field. The law enforcement on scene, they start closing in on him with their guns drawn, yelling at Casey to give up. And once they get close enough where they can see him, they see that Casey has two Glock 40 caliber pistols pointed to both sides of his head on either side. Casey starts yelling that he wants to speak to the sheriff as if that the sheriff could somehow make it all go away and get him out of it, which was not the case. Look, calm down for me, brother. Calm down, all right? Casey, the sheriff will be here in just a minute. Can you put the gun down? Put the gun down and not, it's no needing all this. The sheriff, I'm listening, I'm here, I wanna to talk to you. Just put the gun down. I wanna talk to the sheriff. The sheriff will be here in a minute. And Casey was found guilty and sentenced to 75 years in prison for robbery, burglary, attempted murder, kidnapping, and animal cruelty. Casey was shipped off to live out his 75 year sentence at one of Alabama's worst prisons or baddest prisons or you know, it's, it's a dangerous prison. And I'm talking about the Donaldson 
Correctional Institution in Bessemer, Alabama. Casey White, he absolutely hated it at Donaldson. He despised it and he tried to do anything he could to get away from that particular correctional institution. He told people that he had been shanked twice while he was there, although to date I haven't seen any evidence of that. But um, he would fake medical issues to be able to get away. And he basically tried anything he could to get out of that facility. In 2019, Casey gets in touch with someone at the Lauderdale County Sheriff's Office right here behind me. He calls them and he confesses to being a hitman basically, to being hired to kill a woman here in Florence, Alabama named Connie Ridgeway. Her murder, which took place in 2015, just two months before he was arrested in Limestone County in 2019, at that point, it was a cold case. They had no leads, they had no suspects. So immediately investigators left from here and they drove over to the Donaldson Correctional Institution in Bessemer to interview him and get his side of the story so they could check the validity of it and match it up against the evidence that they had. So Casey tells him that um, a person who has not been named paid him to kill Connie Ridgeway. So late one night on October the 23rd of 2015, he broke into her apartment here and he stabbed her to death. And then while he was in her apartment, he helped himself to whatever cash and jewelry she had laying around like as if it were a robbery. The woman that Casey confessed to killing, that was a contract hit, he said, she lived right here in this apartment complex, the Meadows. I'm pretty sure she lived over here on, on this side. I'm not exactly sure of which apartment number it was, but this is, uh, he murdered Connie Ridgeway right here in this apartment complex. And that's why he was here in Lauderdale County. He was, he was here to have his trial for that murder in 2015 from right here in the Meadows apartment complex. This is the spot where he killed her, right here. Lauderdale County investigators quickly matched up his story to the evidence that they had. Some of it was actually never released to the public, but Casey was able to tell them the stuff like stealing her stuff from the house. So they officially filed charges against Casey White for capital murder. Now, Casey, he's not a stupid person. He knew that confessing to killing Connie Ridgeway could result in him getting a needle in his arm. But Casey had other plans. So in 2020, Casey was sent right here to the Lauderdale County Jail for him to have an arraignment. Altogether, he wound up spending several weeks here and during that time, uh, some of the corrections officers inside of here, they started getting wind from other inmates that Casey was planning an escape. The word was that Casey was gonna use a shank and he was gonna take a hostage, more than likely one of the correctional officers, and then use that hostage to get out of this building. So officers quickly, they, to they tossed him into the hole and uh, they tossed a cell where they found a prison made shank. As a result of all of it, a new policy was enacted here inside of the jail that said two corrections officers would watch over Casey White at all times. It was here during this period back in 2020 when Casey met the assistant director of corrections here at the Lauderdale County Jail, Vicki White. She was one of the corrections officers who were tasked with overseeing Casey at all times. At this point in 2020, Vicki White, she was lonely. She was married for many years, but then right before 2020, her husband passed away. She didn't really have many friends and she lived in a big old home all by herself with no one to talk to. Because she was so lonely, undoubtedly, she enjoyed coming to work every day and actually getting to talk to people. Now, because she was assigned to watch over Casey White, he was who she talked to. 
It's about at this point when other inmates start noticing that Casey is getting special treatment. He's getting extra food on his trays for dinner and he's getting to stay out of his cell longer for like shower times and stuff. I believe this is where Casey starts laying on the charm and this is where Vicky falls in love with him. The sheriff here in Lauderdale County he says that they don't have any evidence of the two of them, Vicky and Casey, like sneaking off into a broom closet or into a bathroom or something for an extended period of time. So they don't have any evidence to conclude that they were having an intimate relationship. But just because they don't have evidence of it don't mean it didn't happen. And I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen a few times. Now, these are unconfirmed reports, but... It has been reported by a few people that uh, in the days leading up to this escape, Vicky was seen buying stuff from an adult store here in the Florence area, you know, a sex store, obviously for once she broke him out. Well, just like in everything in life, all good things must come to an end. Casey, he had his arraignment in court here and it was going to be a long time before his next court day so casey was transported back to donaldson correctional in bessemer alabama to continue that 75 year sentence no one at the time connected the dots and it wasn't until all of this happened that they put those pieces together but between 2020 and 2022 while he was in the state prison down in bessemer alabama Vicky and Casey, they wrote letters to each other. They talked over the phone frequently. And on numerous occasions, Vicky even drove all the way down and visited him. Clearly, she didn't tell any of the officers there at Donaldson that she was a correctional officer as well. And she obviously didn't tell anyone here. It's only because that they're now missing that they've gone through his mail and his call logs and his visitor logs and they have figured all of this out also another thing too with casey in 2008 casey was dating a girl who police investigated and said she committed suicide she died by a shotgun blast to the chest and for whatever reason they labeled it a suicide but this was Casey's girlfriend at the time, and Casey was living with her. Um, but now that all of this has come to light, they are now reinvestigating that case. And, you know, if it turns out that Casey actually did kill her, that just about makes him a serial killer. What is th if you kill three people, that makes you a serial killer, right? And I think it's three people. And for one, why would an investigating, like, sheriff's department classify a like shotgun blast that blew a hole in this poor girl. Why would they classify that as a suicide without doing any investigating really? That's one question that comes out of all of this. And two, how many people could Casey White have killed that we don't know about? I mean, like I said, he could literally be a, a serial killer that just no one knew about. We will have to wait and see if they come up with anything. but. Back to the events of the escape. February of 2022, Casey has a preliminary hearing coming up in the courthouse. And he's transported right back here to the Lauderdale County Detention Center. The whole Casey getting preferential treatment, it just kind of picked right back up from where it had left off nearly two years prior. It's clear now that the planning for this escape had been going on for some time. Just over five weeks prior to the escape, on March the 18th, Vicki listed her home for sale way under the market value. It was worth about $200,000, and she sold it for about half of that, about $95,000. She walked onto a local used car lot, and she paid cash for a 2012 Ford Edge that was like a copper color SUV. Vicky wound up selling off all of her belongings, and um, for the five weeks in between the time she sold her home and the escape, she stayed at her mom's house, where she was able to settle up all of her debts and pay up all of her bills, 
And then about three to four weeks prior to the escape, Vicki, as she comes into work here, she starts talking to her supervisors and her fellow employees about retiring and uh, laying out on a beach somewhere. In the last week leading up to the escape on Friday, Vicki went around to multiple banks in the Florence area here and she withdrew a little bit more than $90,000. All of the money that she had made from selling her home, she withdrew it in cash form, which also means that now that they have escaped, they're carrying 90 grand around with them, like probably in a book bag or something to that nature. And uh, they're just having to lug this with them wherever they go. Three days before the escape, they believe that Vicky did kind of like a trial run of the escape. She drove from the jail the same route that she went on Friday morning to kind of time it and see how long it would take. She also follows through with what she had been talking about the three to four weeks prior and she submits her retirement paperwork into the Lauderdale County Sheriff's Office. With her final day being on April the 29th, 2022. I don't know why it went down like this, but on the 28th, the night before the escape, Vicki wound up staying in a local hotel for some reason. Uh, I'm unsure as to why. And then on the morning of April the 29th, she came into work here just like normal, like nothing was up. She immediately started complaining to coworkers once she got inside that she wasn't feeling well that day. Now, Vicki was responsible for setting up the transport vans for inmates going back and forth between the jail and the courthouse or wherever they had to go. So later in that morning at 8.47 a.m., Vicki oversees one prison van which was loaded with seven inmates and then another which was loaded with five inmates. She oversees them getting loaded up and off to the courthouse with two corrections officers in each van. They both uh, left from right here at the detention facility and they both came right here to the Lauderdale County Courthouse. Back here at the jail at 9.20 a.m., Vicki calls up and has other officers pull inmate Casey White from his cell and prep him for a mental evaluation at the courthouse, which we now know was a sham. There was no evaluation scheduled that day. Vicki tells the other guards, since uh, she's the only other officer who was working that morning who could carry a firearm, she was gonna be taking Casey White to the courthouse all by herself, and then she wasn't gonna come straight back here. She wasn't gonna be back for a while because she felt bad, she was gonna go to an urgent care facility here in Florence to see why she didn't feel good. The corrections officers, they bring Casey down to the booking area and they shackle his legs and chain up his arms with handcuffs. You can see on the security cameras that Vicki backs her car into the roll-up door there in what's, that's what's called a sally port. A sally port is an area that has a roll-up door. There's one on this side and there's one on the other side and they can just pull the car in and then drop both of the doors. So when they are getting inmates in and out of the cars, those inmates virtually have no way to go. At 9.30 a.m., Vicki and Casey exit the sally port and load up into her police car. And then just a minute later, they pull out of the sally port. And if you look, standing right here in front of the... Uh where the sign, the detention center, this right here, that is the Sally Port. That is where she would have loaded up Casey White, right inside of those roll-up doors. Her car was probably parked out here in the parking lot somewhere. And uh, in the video, you can see her backing her car in, so she probably backs it right in that door, loads him up, and then she pulls out right in this direction. In fact, this would have been her parking spot right here, assistant director. That was her spot right there for her car to park. Now at 9.39 a.m., Vicky's patrol car was seen from a camera at the Sunco gas station here. And you can see her turning here at this intersection. 
and uh, judging from the time it took to get from the jail to here it's almost certain that they didn't stop anywhere before this point but you really can't see into the car to see what's going on vicky would have driven her and casey right up this road right here we're going the same exact way she would have driven on her way to drop off her patrol car and switch vehicles at 11 34 a.m two hours later a florence police officer saw the car sitting right here in this parking spot but he didn't stop it wasn't until 3 30 p.m six hours after they left the building here that a booking officer informed her superiors that she had not been able to get in contact with vicky so they went to search for inmate casey white and they realized that he's not back here at the jail and that he's not here at the courthouse. So that booking officer fearing what may have happened, she, like I said, told her superiors, they immediately issued a blue alert, which I'm sure a lot of people probably got. Is at this point the officer who saw her car in the parking lot here at 11:34, when he gets that blue alert on his phone that he then reports it to his superiors so the sheriff's deputies they fly here and they surround the car not knowing what they're going to find inside of it when they finally open it up the patrol car is completely empty there's no personal effects inside of it the shotgun the, and assault rifle that were normally in the vehicle, they are gone. And Casey's handcuffs and leg restraints are laying on the seat in the back. Vicki parks her patrol car right here in the uh, Florence Square Shopping Center. There's an Academy Sports and a Factory Connection and all kind of stuff. Um, and she, she parked her car right here in the shopping center and right here in this parking spot right next to that white van and in fact you can they took a picture of her car sitting there and you can see that white van it hasn't moved you can also see the sign across the street there so that means she drove from the jail and she pulled the car in right here in this spot and sitting right here in the spot is where she undid casey's handcuffs she would have taken his leg cuffs off and his handcuffs and uh, she probably had the, her Ford Edge parked right here in this spot or somewhere near here that they could get to it very easily. She took the shotgun and the assault rifle out and they placed Casey's handcuffs in the back seat. Then they loaded up in the Edge and they left town from this spot right here. After they left, the uh, parking lot here they drove from Florence over to I-65 uh, it's actually a, a decent little drive and they hit I-65 and they went north and this is a breaking development that is happening as I am here filming this video but they have found the getaway car the orange Ford Edge in Tennessee just south of Nashville and believe it or not the car was abandoned on the side of the road Friday, the day of the escape, at just after two o'clock, it was called in as an abandoned car, which means the car was abandoned before they even knew that the couple were missing. It's two hours from Florence to where the car was found. So apparently they went straight north after they were driving for about two hours. It looks like they had some kind of problem with the car, that the car, like broke down on them and they abandoned it on the side of the road well that car w was uh, reported as an abandoned car and a tow truck company came and picked it up and carried it to an impound lot and that is where it has set for the entirety of the last seven days it was only last night that uh, apparently this towing company put the pieces together that this was the car that was used in this escape and they called authorities to let them know. So we know that the couple has now, we know that they went north. She was bragging about going to the beach, so I guess it makes sense to do the opposite of that if you're on the run. 
the two of them, they obviously had a good plan. I mean, it, they've gone an entire week and no one has seen them. That's just wild to me. Casey, he's nearly seven feet tall, so he stands out. Now, they did have a, a good six-hour head start on investigators. They could have driven through multiple states by that point, but we just don't know. They could literally be anywhere in the country right now. Obviously, Casey does not have an ID because he's been locked up in prison for seven years now. They wouldn't be able to cross a border legally anyways. So, that, I mean, they could, they could be anywhere at this point. Right now, they are offering a $25,000 reward. $10,000 for Vicky, $15,000 for Casey. So, if you see them, call in and report it. And you could walk away with twenty five grand in your pocket. And we can get Casey back behind bars. So, a major update. As most of you know, these videos typically take a few days between the time I film them until the time that they're uploaded onto YouTube because once I film them, then I gotta put that together. I gotta get all the pictures and videos and put them in the places where they belong. So it takes some time. Well, obviously I didn't do that fast enough this time because in between the time I went and filmed and now, today is Monday, May the 9th, they have been captured. And uh, basically a rundown of what happened. On Tuesday, a like the local owner of a car wash in Evansville, Indiana, called authorities and reported that a truck had been abandoned there in his car wash. He goes back and watches the security camera footage and he sees Casey White getting out of the truck. And then he sees Vicky White pulling in the parking lot and picking him up. So he, you know, he contacts local authorities and uh, he tells them the type of car that Vicky was driving that when she came and picked him up. So the local authorities and the, the US Marshals, they are on the lookout for that vehicle and they spot it in a Motel 6 parking lot and they put it under surveillance. Well, today, like I said, Monday, May the 9th, uh, while they were watching this vehicle, they saw Vicky come out, get in the car with a wig on. Then they see Casey come out and get in the car with a ball cap and glasses on. And uh, they pull out of the parking lot. The police, law enforcement, they attempt to pull them over. And Casey's driving. He runs, takes off from them. They, he led authorities on a high-speed chase that lasted just a couple of minutes. The marshals wound up ramming their vehicle, causing it to crash. And uh, it's believed at that point that Vicky shot herself so she didn't have to come back and deal with uh, being in trouble or deal with the, the, you know, all her friends and family in Lauderdale County. But what's weird is, is Casey's first interaction with law enforcement is uh, he gets out of the car that's crashed and crumbled. He crawls out. He tells police, please help my wife. She's trapped in the car and she shot herself. I didn't do it. That was his first words to authorities, which is really weird. The I didn't do it part. So what happened there? Um, so, I, you know, the whole ending of my video where I talk about calling the FBI, all that's moot. They have been captured. Vicki White wound up dying from her injuries a couple of hours after being admitted into the hospital from for that gunshot wound. Casey didn't have any injuries and he will very quickly be expedited back to Lauderdale County, Alabama to have arraignment and they're immediately going to ship him right back off to the Donaldson Correctional Facility or worse, he could go to Holman down in Atmore, which is the worst prison in Alabama. Um, but he's going to go right back to the Department of Corrections. They have been caught. It's, the, the chase is over. The hunt is over now. That is going to do it for this video today on Vicki White and uh, escaped inmate Casey White. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. This is a big time story that's pretty close to my home. That's why I uh, chose to do this one today. If you're new here, go down, hit that subscribe button, then hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you're wanting to help support the channel, there's links in the description box below. You can check those out. But really, I just can't thank you all enough for watching. 
you know, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All of you stay safe and stay healthy and uh, be on the lookout for these two fugitives on the run. Much love to y'all.